Often when I start new videos about new law friendly cars for GTA 5, I normally exclaim that I never would have thought to have put that car into GTA 5. Well, this one goes one step further because I don't even think about the real version of this car. This is the Ocelot Euphoria, also known as the Lotus Europa. A car which I forgot existed. I sort of recognized this body shape like, where did I see that before? And then I googled it and lo and behold, this is based on the Lotus Europa. A car which I never think to think about because it's just one of those weird cars that just sort of disappeared into history. I'm sure I've seen like one or two of these in my life at car shows or something like that. But now we can drive around in a law friendly version that fits into the GTA universe through the power of mods. This is not an official car, although it does look it. So let's just pull over here and check it out in a little more detail. And so here we are. And first of all, I'm just going to open up the hood, which I like. Opens up that way. Very nice. And then we also have the trunk that opens like that. And as you can see, this is a mid-engined car. So we have the engine right there. Mostly 3D modeled. Does look very nice as well. Got all the throttle bodies and everything showing up there. All the ignition leads and everything running down. And then in the front, we have a spare wheel. Again, nicely detailed. Very nicely textured and everything else. This is a very nicely made car. Gotta say that straight off the bat. So, let's just close all that down. I don't think the doors open in any particular way. They are just regular doors, as you can see there. On the interior, it does look very nice. I don't know if this is based on any particular car that's in GTO, if this is made to fit this car, but it fits in wonderfully. We have this nice wood steering wheel and everything going on here. We've got the Ocelot badging, all of the dials and everything going on. We've also got some nice branded floor mats as well. And we've got a nice gated heat shifter right there. We've got some nice wood paneling going on. Got some wood going on in the back. Nice classic style sports seats. I think this looks very nice indeed. Right, let's see what tuning parts we have because we do actually have tuning parts for this thing. So, uh, do we have any Benny's lover? We do actually have some liveries. Okay, we'll check those out first then. So we have livery one, which is gonna give us this uh, nice tasteful racing thing. I don't know if any of these are gonna be like based on anything from real life. I, you know, I'm gonna have to apologize straight away. But we have number 423, Debonair, Team Ocelot. Very nice, then we have number five. These do fit in very nicely with this car though. Definitely some nice 70s style liveries going on here. Very British looking. Then we have number three. Just a... Uh, I don't know what that says. It says 69B, whatever. But it's just got some sort of lines going on, which, which is quite good because there's a lot of blank space at the rear here, which could do with a little something. So that actually works quite nicely. And we've also got it along the front as well. Then we have number four, which has just got some numbering added onto that one. Number 100, got a couple of brand stickers there as well. Then we have number five, which is a stripe just going down the middle. This is just going to be a yellow stripe. We have got a yellow car, so it's kind of hard to see, but you can see it there. Then we have number six, number 33. Got some cool hand stuff going on here. Again, I don't know if this is based on anything, but I do like this black thing going on in the front here. We have got a bit of a yellow flip. We can change that with the paints in a second. Then we have livery number seven, Kun Tech. Engine management systems, number 90, and a bunch of branding. And also, we've got some yellow stripes going along there. Then we have Tarmac Tiger. This is actually one of the named ones, just a red stripe going along with some stars at the front. Then we have the red stripe in the middle, like that, a thick one with a couple of small bands either side. And then we have number 10 to finish with this very weird floral style thing. I'm sure there's a name for this. It sort of looks like someone, this was like a trick that people used to do with cars back in the day. They used to get like old lace curtains and stuff like that. And they would sort of like layer it over and then spray it so that you'd have the pattern sort of with the spray. Uh, this sort of gives it that sort of look in a way. So I think that might be what it's going for. I'm not entirely sure, but either way, very interesting. But this one, I'm actually going to go with that first one because I think it does look good. Although it would be nice if we can change the white to something else, but we'll see. So on the spoiler, we have quite a few options. We have the stock, we have the standard. Where's this going to go on? Okay, standard and stock is the same apparently. So we have the race ducktail. Interesting. Then we have the tuna spoiler. We have the touring special. 
We have the race spoiler. That's quite a low down one. In fact, almost drag like. And then we have the GT spoiler right there. It does look a little odd. <laughs> it, it, why does that look so weird on a car this age? I guess because we didn't have spoilers like that back in the day. Or did we? I don't know. It just looks kind of odd. I think like that would fit it or perhaps that one right there. If we're going to go for... I'm going to make this like a race car build. So I'll go for that one. Then on the front bumper, we have the options of the stock. We have the bolted bumper. Just going to add some tiny little bolts onto the bumper there. Then we have the long bumper. Oh, that's kind of nice. Then we have the long bolted bumper. Those bolts are very small in detail, as you can see. Then we have the bumper delete. Just getting rid of that. It does make it look a bit more race car. We might go for that. Or we also have... Yes, okay. That with the front splitter. That's definitely very race car. We'll go for that on this particular build. We'll do another build after, of course. Then on the rear bumper, we have the stock. Then we have the bolted bumper. I don't know. Oh, okay. It's just more bolted little bits on there. Very small detail, as you can see. Also, yes, we are indicating left today. You can just barely see that. Then we have the long bumper. Then we have the long bolted bumper. I'm definitely going to do another build with that long one because I quite like that. But then we also have the bumper delete. That's going to make it look a bit more race car. We'll go for that. Onto the side skirts then. So we have the stock. We have the bolt-on arches. Okay. Front and rear. And then we also have the wide body kit. Now that, again, fits in perfectly with the whole race car aesthetic. Although that does sort of mix up our livery a little bit there. So maybe I'll change the livery. Because I think the next one along will fit slightly off. Oh, actually, that one fits in just about. Okay, that one fits in perfectly because everything's on the door. There's no sort of overlapping thing going on. Okay, we're going to go for that one then. Then on the exhaust, lots of options here. We have the twin center. Oh, this completely changes it. Okay, so this is like a whole rear end change. So we have the twin center. Then we have the twin exhaust down the bottom. We have the race exhaust. So this has all moved it down to here now. We have the Shakatan exhaust. Wow, okay, that's that's not the stuff. <laughs> I was not thinking Shakatan with this car, but apparently that's been added. I was just about to say, it's nice to have loads of different options and also shiny exhausts. That's one thing that I always complain about with Rockstar's cars. It's nice to just see a car that just has all the options. If you want Shakatan exhaust, it's there. If you want just a nice shiny back box, it's there. Then we also have a vented panel. I guess that's kind of race car-esque. Then we have a twin center version. We have the twin exhaust down there, race exhaust, and the Shakatan exhaust. I'm going to go for that twin center vented thing. It just makes it look a bit more like a race car, so we'll do that. Then on the chassis, we have the sun strip. That's just going to be that, which also ties into the liveries. We can see some of the different ones going along here. The stripe doesn't actually go over that sun strip, though. It seems to just be a couple of these have them featured we'll just go for the cool hand one and then we also have the options for some taped up headlights i guess that fits in as well as a sort of race car aesthetic so let's just go ahead and upgrade all of our stuff we don't normally do speed tests on these so it doesn't really matter slam it down or not so much of a slam but we'll change the suspension at least okay on the extras we also have this surround so we can actually have like proper glass covers on the lights i'll definitely use that in the second build but uh, as this is supposed to be some sort of race car, I guess it makes sense to have that. Especially since we have taped lights, it would be silly to have taped lights underneath big massive glass domes, wouldn't it really? Because obviously the tape is there just in case you smash the glass. So, let's just find ourselves some better paint. First of all, we need to get the pearlescent. We need to get rid of that. Oh, that's instantly better. Instantly better. Okay, let's run through these because I think we've got some nice sort of old school colours in the utility section. Hmm. Okay, let's have a run through these. Okay, so I've been running through these a couple of times now, trying to just decide what to do. And while some of these do have some nice old school colorings, it doesn't go well with the livery, apart from if I just went with white. Just make this a white and black car. I think that makes it look a lot better. So I'm just going to go with that for this build. The next one, I'm going to make it cool and and uh, i'm gonna I'll try and make it like a just a nice sort of like a, a lowered cool retro style car so for the sort of like the wheels and the uh, stancing aspect as if to say just the actual general stance not some sort of camber thing 
these wheels do fit it quite nicely as race wheels. I'm not sure what other wheel options we could get here that also look sort of like period correct. Maybe something just like these or something. See, now something like these, these are quite old school style wheels. I think that fits it quite well. They do look very small in these arches, I have to say. So I could really just sort of like bring the wheels out just a little bit more. Maybe that makes it look a little bit better. Maybe we'll get a tiny bit more low, just so it has a bit more center of gravity for racing. But I wouldn't change it too much from that. And I think that's it for that first build. So that's definitely a nice race build. That's definitely a solid race car. What I like actually is you can get some decent different style combinations out of these. There's quite a nice selection of mods with this one. I do like how this car has turned out. And so there we are with that first build. Pretty solid. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. I do want to see what it looks like with big, shiny chrome wheels, stance, a nice color paint job. I have to do it. It's just in my blood that every car has to have that treatment because sometimes you find a gem. And uh, I'm, I'm convinced that this might be a hidden gem. Especially because I don't think anyone has ever in the world owned a Lotus Europa and actually sort of like load it and stanced it and sort of made it look like that. So I'm kind of curious to see what it looks like. Let's park here in front of the Chunan shop and let's spawn in another one. And uh, I'm not going to do some sort of like time lapse or anything. I'm just going to show you the completed product in three, two, one. Okay. Here we are, and well, you guys sort of knew I was going to do it. I've gone Shakatan. At least with the exhaust. I've just tried to make this. I've gone for like super, super wide wheels. I went to V-Stancer and just stretched those wheels out to a, a ridiculous width, as you can tell right there. And I basically just cambered it on the rear. I made it slightly cambered, but sort of staggered a bit less on the front. And I just dropped it to the ground. I went for a nice, simple color. It's a classic. It's a metallic. I think it's a beautiful color. I think it goes well with the sort of the age of the car and all the chrome details. I've gone for the chrome on the front bumper, like the full strip. I've gone for the chrome surrounding the glass lights. I went for the sun strip. Why not? And I went for this duck tail, although I'd have preferred it if we didn't have all the sort of strut holding things. But, you know, that's fine. Went for the Bozo Soccer exhaust. Went for the long style rear bumper. And in fact, I've just reset the v stancer settings just so I can show you how much those wheels were stretched out by. That is how much gap is left. I can actually go ahead now and set that width back to how it was right there. <laughs> that is a lot of extra width going on. But I think this thing does look amazing. It's definitely glitching on the front. We've definitely made it a little too low. A little too low. There we go. We'll knock that up by one. But how about that? That's going to scrape. Or oh, it won't because it's actual visual lowering, so it's not going to scrape on this one. But that's definitely two ways to change a Lotus Europa or just an Ocelot Euphoria. This is a... Ooh, what happened there? I sort of just sunk into the ground there. What was that about? Well, I'm curious to see what you guys think. I know some of you guys hate it when I do this sort of stance thing, but equally, I love it just because it's so silly. And sometimes you do find some gems, even though we all know... They're terrible for driving. I wouldn't own a car like this, but I still think it's fun to make them. But there we go, guys. That is it. A wonderful car. A car which I never would have thought of to put into GTA 5. I would never in a million years think to make this as a 3D model and you know, all this sort of stuff. It's a great job. Absolutely brilliant job. Love it. I think it's something that Rockstar would do because they sort of think outside the box sometimes with the sort of cars that they add. And this just goes in the spirit of that beautifully. But there we go, guys. If you have got all the way to the end of this video, I need to find some text for you guys to... Oh, that was a terrible crash. It's okay. We're still good. We're still good. I want you guys to say... Uh, uh, for rent in the comment section below. There we go. You can say for rent. That will let me know that you watched the entire thing. But other than that, that is it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Oh.